Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on the 2500 HD Silverado. We're going to be swapping out all these parts. Let's get to it. First thing you're going to want to do is support the vehicle. We're going to be working on the driver's side. Same process is going to be for the, uh, the passenger side. So I'm only going to show one side because this is going to be a long video. And the only thing I'm not going to be touching on is going to be the Pittman arm. The, and the Eiler arm. And the bracket. So those are going to be in a different video. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is take off the tire. Now that we got the wheel off, I'm going to be replacing the hubs, uh, the tie rod ends, the uh, inner tie rod. The upper control arm and the lower ball joint and the bump stop which is not there anymore and the shocks and the brakes and the rotor so i'm gonna start hitting everything with the pb blaster probably a good idea to do this ahead of time but i didn't have that time so another note to make is that when we're changing the changing the tie rods the inner and outer we're going to take a measurement from center point here and take a measurement of the length all the way up to the inner tie rod end and we're going to try to keep that at the same measurement um, when we put on the new the new parts um, you're going to have to get this aligned after no if ands or buts but at least that way you can get it as close as you possibly can so that way you could drive to the shop and then we're also going to be taking markings of our upper control arms uh, from I don't know if you can see these, the pin here and the end. So we're going to be doing that for on all of these on the outer and the inner parts, uh, inner, outer. And then we're going to be the same process on the passenger side of the truck as well. Um, as far as alignment issues, that's going to be the only things is the, the, the tie rods and then the upper control arm, um, the brackets there. Another pointer when it comes to the bump stops, if you're replacing yours, on your truck it is possible to get a wrench in here and take off it's just one one nut that holds the bump stops on but this is best to be replaced when you're replacing your shocks because with the shock out of the way you can get uh, proper tools in there it can be done without it but it's just a lot easier that way okay next we're going to be removing this uh, 10 millimeter bolt take this uh just loosen the brake line bracket here um that way we can take the, when we take the brake calipers off we can go ahead and suspend them from uh, this point or just really any other point but we want to get it out of the way so we can work on it and then you got your abs line here that's clipped on right there or some 90 degree pliers like that you're going to squeeze it there and then just pop it right out next we're going to follow the abs line we're going to pop off this clip just stick a flathead screwdriver in there and just pop that out like that Speaker. on the top of the shock and you're going to have the connection right here. You're just going to pull back on that and pull the cable. So just get under it like that and just pull up on it like so. So now we got that loose and we got this loose. We're going to work on the caliper. Okay, to remove the caliper, you need an 18 millimeter socket. Once you break those loose, you're just going to remove these two bolts. Okay, so you're just going to set these aside. I didn't. Um, all we did right now is just take off the brake caliper and the bracket for the brake pads. Just the two bolts here. Um, one up here and one down here. Uh, so I got those off and then right up here on your upper control arm, you're going to have a 10 millimeter bolt. You just take that off and that removes this bracket here, which is just tucked up under it. You're gonna want a bungee cord just to wrap it around this bracket here. And if it's too long, just keep wrapping it around, wrapping it around until it gets uh, short enough. And I just hooked it on right there and just let that hang out of the way. Next, we're gonna be taking off the rotor. It has just these little uh, safety pins here that just hold it in place. So just gonna use the flathead screwdriver to take those off. All right, so I just used two pliers and I just kind of wiggled them back and forth until they came off. So I'm also going to be replacing the hubs. I got new new ones of those. I don't know if you could hear that.
they are grinding like crazy. It just sounds like metal ball bearings with no grease, which is exactly what's going on. So to remove the hub, you got you got four bolts. One, two, three, and four. Right there. And uh, you can probably hit it with some PV blaster on these ends here. And that was the other reason that we removed the ABS cable from the control arm right here earlier in the video. And that's because we're going to remove, uh, be removing this. Now, if you're only replacing the ABS sensor on your truck, you have a new one, then all you're going to do is you're going to get up to this point and you're going to have your ABS sensor right here. And there's just a little hex nut right there. Just take that off, pull the sensor out. Uh, you rerun it and then you're going to rerun the new one. Pop the new sensor back in after you clean uh, clean it out in there. But if you're not replacing the whole hub, that's how you would replace just the sensor. Okay, now we're removing the hub. So you're going to pull the bolts out. You got the one, two, three, and four. Just going to get the inner two here. Got the four bolts removed. Just needs a little finesse. There we go. See? Nice and easy. Here we dust shield. Just goes on like that. Just right behind the, uh, the hub. So now we can start working on the ball joints. Got your tie rod. The upper control arm. And now I'm going to be doing the lower ball joint here. You are going to need a press for the lower ball joint. Removing everything. You're going to want to support your lower control arm because of the torsion bars. I didn't remove those. You're going to need to support it when you're putting everything back together because nothing is going to line up. Until you get the upper control arm back on and the knuckle back on, um, that's when you can take the support off of the lower control arm. So what I'm doing now is making sure that these are clean. And I'm going to go ahead and mark off the alignment here. So I'm going to go from that bolt from that stud I should say the point and go ahead and follow this like that just do one on the back side just for good measure and then place one on the actual frame of the truck there like so and that one's off you gotta make sure your head's straight when you're doing it <laughs> And you want to try to mark it in a couple different areas, not just one spot. So then that way if it rubs off for some reason, you have backup spots to mark off of. You got those marked off. It's probably a good thing I'm changing these because listen. It's not a good sign. Either whoever did this alignment before left it loose, or the bushings on this thing are just completely gone. So it's a good thing we're doing that. Next, we're going to measure the tie rod from the inner point here, from the edge here. Let me see if I can get in there. From the edge here, we're going to measure that all down this to the center point of the tie rod here. Uh, right on the knuckle We're gonna measure that and make sure that when we put the new one on it is the exact same length So now that I got that now we're gonna go ahead and put the new one on right now we're under the truck and We're looking up at the inner part of the tie rod This is the inner part and then this is the tie rod comes down and then you have the tie rod end here and you're gonna need a wrench that is gonna get pretty big. So hopefully I have one. I don't think so, because that's usually how my life works. Just barely. All right. All right. You're not gonna need a breaker bar, but you are gonna need some pretty good leverage. And now we're just going to go ahead and just keep turning this and take this off. Now once you're done turning that, it's going to come loose. And then you can just let that hang down. Now we're going to come back up. Now I'm going to remove the nut on the 
outer tie rod. The best way to get these off is to use lubricant, PB blaster, and then using an impact. The reason for that is if you use hand tools, um, you'll find that as you're churning it by hand, it's gonna end up churning the whole ball joint. Using an impact, sometimes it'll end up breaking it loose and just enough that it'll start spinning the nut off and the ball joint itself won't spin. But if it does, uh, you'll have to use a wrench and then you can actually put another, you'll kind of see it on yours, um, the top is hexed off. So you could actually use pliers or something and grab it and then that way you could still turn the nut. This tie rod end is going to be a 21 millimeter. I'm going to go to see if it's going to work with me and break off. And it did. Cool. If you're not reusing your ball joint, you can just tap it on top right here. That's going to damage it. So you absolutely should not do that if you're reusing it. You could also knock it on the side right here. Sometimes that breaks it loose. I actually have a separator, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. There we go. That thing was gone. All right, so now we're going to make sure that the, the new one is going to be the same length, and then I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and reinsert this end here. And the outer tie rod is disconnected so we can just spin it freely. All right, on this next part, we're gonna remove the lower ball joint. I'm gonna start by removing the nut at the bottom here. And then we're gonna move up to the upper control arm. Now we're going to remove the upper. Ooh, she took it like a champ. I'm going to use the pickle fork. Take off the top here. Top ball joint. There it is. And remember, don't use this uh, pickle fork. Unless your ball joints are trash. This thing's just falling apart. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna separate the bottom from the knuckle. Got a ball joint press uh, tool. Rented this from our local auto parts store. It's got all the different cups there. And this lower ball joint is gonna have to get pressed out. And on this particular model, there is no snap, snap ring at the top. So we're just gonna press it out. That was a pain in the butt, but we got it. It's flush. Upper control arms. 
I'm gonna use the deep socket 21 inch, come from the inside here, go behind the shock. I'm gonna use an extension and then hook onto it right here. Now remember we already made the marks there. I don't know if you can see them. So we already got that. This one here, do the same thing. Just all right. So now these are loose. I'm going to remove these two nuts. Slowly pull the plate out. So then that way I'm not damaging any of the markings that I made. See right there. I'm gonna set these aside. Now you want to remember which side you had on which side. So uh, let's set them out. I'm gonna go set them out on the workbench. Once you have both those bolts out, I should just wiggle it out. And then it comes out on one piece. So upper control arms out. While I have this out, I'm gonna replace the shock and I'm gonna replace the bump stop. Yeah, look at that thing. That's the new one right there, Moog. So now I'm removing the lower lower bolt. And it's gonna be the same thing. You don't have to take all this apart to get to the shock to replace it, but this is what I'm doing. So I'm right here. It's gonna be a lot easier for me than some others, but. Oh, I spoke too soon. So now it's spinning on me. So right under here, there's actually a nut that you can hold on to. And a wrench does not really fit in there. Neither does one of those. So, I'm actually going to hold on to the top right here. So I don't want to sit here and look for a tool that's going to fit in there. I'm messing around with it. So that nut is off now. And like I said, just at the top right here, you can just hold it with uh, some vice grips or something. And then you can continue to loosen the bolt. Take the one bushing off there. If you want, just so you don't forget, well, I guess they're almost the same. You can kind of keep them, keep it as you take it off. So then that way you can remember what orientation the pads go into and so forth. And this bottom bolt here, you're just gonna whack that out like that. And then just pull right out. And then you can just remove the shock. And then installation is the same thing. You're just gonna, you're actually gonna put the top in first and then you're gonna slide the bottom back in and then just put the nuts in. Yours will probably have some kind of a cable or something um, wired up to it. I recommend keeping that on until you get it into the holes and at that point cutting it off so then that way it doesn't expand on you and you're trying to close it. So now for the bump stop, while I have everything off, you have extremely easy access to it. It's right there, one bolt. You can see mine's falling apart here. Actually, it's not even there anymore. That's what it's supposed to look like. There's nothing there. It is a 15 millimeter. Okay, that's off. There we go. So that's what's left of my old ones nothing so now for the new one same thing just pop that in there and it's got a little guide pin right there so you put that in the other hole and then that's it and then you just put the nut for the shock absorber when reinstalling it you're gonna see the grommets have a little lip to them and the other side the other side of that grommet is going to be flat and one of it has a little lip so the lip side on the top and the bottom, the lip side is gonna be the one facing the hole. So you see how there's a hole there? So that lip, of the grommet is supposed to go inside the hole so you can't slide it side to side. Same thing for the bottom. So it's gonna go in there just like that. So the top is gonna be facing down, the bottom is gonna be facing up. So that's how the grommet should go in on here. So just like that.
All right, so I got the upper control arm back on. Uh, I didn't show it, but I mean, it's really simple. You just literally slide it in there, slide that part in there. Um, that supports itself. It'll hold in place and then you just wiggle it and get the holes back into place. Um, you can use a screwdriver or just something small enough to go in there just to uh, guide it. But once you get it back in, you gotta remember these uh, the lines that we drew earlier. And just make sure that they're lined back up. So I got it as close as I possibly could on each one's on the inner and the outer. And when you're tightening them back up, you're gonna support it with one side. So on the outside, I just use that as a supporter. Um, I think this is actually the side when they're doing an alignment is the side that they churn. And then this is the side that they use to just tighten it down. So you're gonna hold this one in place once you get your plates in place. And then on this side is the side that you're gonna tighten down. Now, before I actually put the knuckle back on, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do the uh, torque specs on them. I'm not gonna record myself uh, doing it, but I'm gonna go ahead and run through the torque specs. So we got the shock absorber to the lower control arm bolts on the 2500 is gonna be 59 foot pounds. So that's gonna be this bolt here. It's gonna be foot pounds, 59 foot pounds. Next, we're gonna move on to the upper control arm. The upper control arm uh, to frame nuts, which are gonna be these two here. These are gonna be 140 foot pounds. 140 foot pounds. The upper uh, control arm ball joint right here is gonna be 37 foot pounds. And then down here, you're gonna have your lower ball joint, uh, the stud nut, and that's gonna be 92 foot pounds. And then your hub bearing assembly, once I put the knuckle back on, those are gonna be 133 foot pounds each. So the four, the four bolts. 133 foot pounds each and then this one actually i just found it it's going to be uh 106 inch pounds not foot pounds inch pounds all right so i've done a lot since the last recording uh, i apologize my camera actually died and it takes a while to charge so i know i need to figure something else out but i was able to record taking everything apart which is the hardest part um putting everything back together is pretty simple and then I already talked about the torque specs. Um, so yeah, got the upper ball joint torqued down, tie rod torqued down, like that. Got the control arms torqued down. Uh, redid the brake line. So I got that bolted on there. And we got that one snug down there. That's the other bracket. The ABS line. We got the lower ball joint there got that torque down we got the safety pin in cotter pin then we have the bump stop installed and the new shock and that is torqued down as well you can see there we also got the hub installed we got those torqued down to 133 foot pounds and now we're going to be putting on I just put on the rotors Everything's looking pretty good. I'm gonna get the brakes all put back together. That's about it as far as um, doing your ball joints, uh, the upper control arm. I think next I'm gonna tackle the stabilizers here and my next video is gonna be on the idler arm and the bracket and the pitman arm. Uh, but mine are in pretty good condition right now so it's not a, not a huge deal. So I'm not really stressing about those but that's gonna be the next one. And then that's gonna be it. Now the passenger side is exactly the same. There's nothing different on that side that you're gonna run into. And honestly, if I did both sides, this video would be super long and I don't think anybody wants to watch it that long. So um, I'm gonna end it here. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and head down to the comments, put them in there. I try to get back to them as soon as I can. Uh, if a couple weeks go by and I don't respond, um, it's not my fault. It's because YouTube doesn't notify me that you commented. I think it's because of the settings. Um, but eventually I go on there and I, and I check to see who's commenting and uh, try to follow up with it and try to answer them. All right. But other than that, uh, that's about everything on here on the suspension side. Thank you for watching. Um, I want to thank you guys for your support once again. And that's it. Thank you.